Yesterday, I shared a personal story about how my father was part of the untold story of the Keatley Valley Colony, a group of 130 Japanese Americans who escaped the internment camps and found safety in the state of Utah. Well, tonight, you get to learn more about the man, Fred Wada, the Oakland produce owner who led the colony out of California. You also meet the handful of survivors whose families made that courageous decision to escape incarceration and live free. On a summer day in August, a group of Japanese Americans whose lives began in California gathered in the state of Utah for a reunion <laughs> to remember their history, to remember their past. This is such a fascinating story. <laughs> you think so? Including the most senior of the group, 94-year-old Mei Yamada Kong. You're still sharp. No, I don't think so because something that happened to <laughs> something that happened two weeks ago, I can't remember. But you remember 80 years ago. <laughs> yeah. And to understand what happened more than 80 years ago in 1942. How many, how many photos do you have? Oh, or we have, have you collected over yeah, the years? Yeah, quite a lot. Take a look inside the Benicia home of Mary Wada Roth. And these pictures here, I think, are. Important. Okay. Where you'll find an archive of documents that tell this little known story that all centers on this single photograph. I mean, this is probably the most famous photo. <laughs> the out iconic. Of, out of Keely. I think so. Oh my gosh, what was this taken? Keely. Keely. A photo sparking more than just a memory, but reuniting old friends. This picture. You are in this picture? Yeah. This guy here. Oh wow. my God. Jerry Endo. How cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are the children of what is known as the Keatley Valley Colony. During World War II, while 120,000 Japanese Americans on the West Coast were rounded up and sent to internment camps, Mary's father, Fred Wada, an Oakland produce owner decided to do the unthinkable. When he realized that he didn't have to go to camp, he said, I'm not going to camp. He says, I'm going to relocate somewhere else. He said, I'm not going to be a, a ward of the government. Where Wada and a group of 130 family members and friends made the courageous decision to escape the internment camps and live free in the state of Utah. But first, he needed to get permission. So my father went to Utah to, to Salt Lake City, met with the governor. He told Governor Ma that he was bringing a group of Americans, Japanese citizens who've been loyal. And he told them if there is anyone amongst the group who does anything disloyal or breaks the law, he says, you could put me in front of a shooting squad and shoot me. He was a believer. He loved cowboy movies. And that was one of the things that he said was you could Put me in front of a shooting squad and shoot me. That bravado paid off. The governor was impressed. And with travel passes like these in hand, they made the trek from the Bay Area to Keatley Valley, 40 miles east of Salt Lake City. So this is uh, them clearing the land. As you see, you can see there aren't, uh, there's only one tractor. So but when when they got there, I mean, th this wasn't farmland. It wasn't farmland. It was all sagebrush. Fred Wada also making sure their Utah neighbors knew they were loyal to their country, especially after someone tried to scare them with a stick of dynamite. And so signs like this, food for freedom, was important to my father to say that we are Americans and we're uh, making food for Americans. Do you remember this photo? Uh, yes, absolutely. I Kim and Helen were only six and three when their family fled Oakland and followed Fred Wada. There you are. <laughs> Just Posing. So sassy. That is exactly the so, way you are. So you were the sassy one? <laughs> yes, she was. Even and that's the way she still is. Oh, no. I thought you were the sassy one. Not me. <laughs> I was a quiet one. We had a lot of friends to play with because they were. we were all in this one, that's you know, the little village. And so we had friends that we could play with. That's, Gracie's gone, though, and... But as those memories begin to fade, the last survivors of the Keatley colony making sure to pass their story on to the next generation.
Thank goodness we had Mr. Fred Wada. Just ask 94-year-old Mei Yamada Kong what she remembers. I don't know. <laughs> and instead, she'll tell you what she will never forget. You, you were able to live free. We were able to live free. And, you know, while they were able to live free, they, it was a very hard life because it was a, there was a farming community. They had to clear mm -hmm. all these rocks and sagebrush. It's high desert. Mm -hmm. And they grew a lot of crops, and they sold it to Salt Lake City. They sold it to the local community, and they gave it to a U.S. Army base. Wow. They also donated, donated food, ironically, to a Japanese internment camp in Topaz, Utah. Oh, my god. So providing food for other people who were not able to escape the internment camps and had to live behind the barbed wires. And, and, and the wooden shacks. Unbelievable. But they, they were free, and, you know, and, and, and I think Mayor, uh, May, 94-year-old <laughs> May said it the best. Thank goodness for Fred Wada. Yeah, boy. It just, I'm just amazed seeing them reunite after mm -hmm. all this time. I mean, they were only together for a few years, but then they all share this really wonderful common bond. And it's yeah. just so neat to hear how they came and they may do with what they had and they even gave back. Mm -hmm. And, and that reunion, sadly, but also, thankfully, they got to meet one last time because mm -hmm. a lot of the folks are, are, are older right now, sure. including May, who's 94. That's probably the last time they're going to meet. Yeah, what a moment. Yeah. So neat that you were there. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. What a special.